So you might have heard of this thing called thermal paste, and let me tell you what it's for. Juggling. Actually, not what it's for at all. What it's really for is applying to a heat generating item, such as a processor, in order for it to more effectively transfer that heat away from it, where it can be dissipated by something like an air cooling heat sink or a water cooling block. But now that you know what it's for, you have to figure out which one to use. There are so many options with different characteristics. So we're going to be taking four of the most popular thermal pastes available on NCIX.com, running them through the paces on a Core i5 3570K overclocked to almost 4.4 gigahertz. And we're going to let you know which one allows the heat to be transferred most effectively from the CPU to the cooling solution. But before we do that, let's walk through some of the main ways of applying thermal compounds. So number one is always clean your CPU thoroughly with a lint-free cloth and some 99% isopropyl or rubbing alcohol before reapplying new paste. Next up is Factor in the size of the actual CPU. Sometimes on particularly things like video cards, there won't be a large metal heat spreader over top of the GPU in that case. So don't put on as much thermal compound. Less is more when it comes to thermal paste and putting on too much can actually make it act as an insulator for heat rather than a heat transfer aiding material. So the most commonly used method these days is the pea method, where you put a small pea-shaped, but not pea-sized, amount of thermal compound in the middle, usually somewhere between the size of an uncooked grain of rice or a cooked grain of rice. Next up is the line method. For the line method, the rationale was back when the dyes were getting larger and we were first seeing quad cores from Intel, we were seeing that they were not square in shape anymore. So it was beneficial to put a line down the middle of the CPU in the orientation of where the dyes were located under the heat spreader. The line method is effective as well, but is not really gonna generate better results unless you have a CPU that particularly benefits from it. The old fashioned method that some people still use today but has been sort of debunked as a, a necessary step is the spreading method. So that's where you'll put some thermal compound in the middle of the CPU and use something like a credit card or a piece of plastic over your finger to spread it around. This was mostly useful for very old thermal compounds such as the old OCZ Ultra 2, which um, needed that, whereas most of the modern ones really don't. Which brings us to the results. So how much of a difference can a different thermal compound possibly make when you're running the same system? So that's our 3570K overclocked and all you're changing out is the thermal compound. Well, the answer is going from a generic thermal compound. I mean, this is the most generic thermal compound I've ever encountered. It doesn't even have CPU cooler spelled right on it. CPU cooler. Come on, man. Going from that to a brand name such as Arctic Cooling MX4 gives us almost a 15 degree difference in temperatures. This is the same kind of temperature difference that can be achieved by doing things like swapping out a CPU cooler, except that thermal compound costs anywhere from sort of three to around $12 at the high end. So there you go, MX4 was the top performing thermal compound with the venerable Arctic Silver 5 coming in in second. However, it should be noted that Arctic Silver 5 does tend to perform a little bit better after a while once it's cured and with Arctic Alumina coming in last. Now it should be noted that sometimes thermal compounds are geared for a specific use. So while air cooling or liquid cooling might not be the appropriate use for another thermal compound that wasn't in our test called Ceramique that is also from Arctic Cooling, it's optimal for sub-zero cooling because some of the silver-based compounds and other more advanced formulas don't work very well at sub-zero temperatures. So there you go, guys. At least from NCIX's inventory, MX4 is a great choice. It's easier to spread than some of the old MX formulations, and it performs extremely well. Thank you for checking out this Thermal Compound Showdown, and don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from NCIX.com.